everybody, my name is Alberto Marquez. In this video we will discuss advanced transfer conveyors in Arena. Let's start with a model that has already been partially created in which we have two stations. Each one of the stations will modify the, the entities in a process. And we have a one final station that is used just to dispose. We will first create the entity and immediately we will assign a sequence. We can go inside of the assign module and we are going to modify an attribute, particularly the attribute associated with a sequence and we are going to assign it value 1. Very good. The next step will be to take the entity into a station. It's important to have an initializing station so the entity notes its current location. So right now the entity enters a station and it will leave a station. And it's important how it leaves the station. Right now it's that station is indicated as station 3 and in the leave we're, we're planning to use conveyors, so we will access a conveyor. And the conveyor name will be conveyor 1. The conveyors are specified in terms of the number of cells, and the cells should measure a particular quantity. The cells could be of 1 feet, for instance. And if you have uh, a distance of 30 feet between the two stations, then you would need 30 cells. So in conveyors, distances are not measured by actual unit metric units, but actually in cells. And there must be a transformation between the distance into cells. So Arena keeps consistency with the manipulation of conveyors. So the connect type this time is convey on a conveyor. And since we are going to be using sequences, the next station is not through a station definition, but by a sequence definition. And that's good enough. Now we have a leave and we have a queue for those entities that are trying to access the conveyor. The conveyor is divided in cells. If that cell that is trying to access is busy at the very moment that the entity is trying to access the conveyor, it will not let it. That's why it, it generates a queue because it checks for the availability of the entrance cell inside the conveyor. Very good. So now it goes into the first station, enter station 1, and as it enters, the transferring activity is to exit the conveyor. As we select exit the conveyor, it's asking for which conveyor is, is being received from. The only conveyor we will have in this example is conveyor 1. Notice that you can identify a delay for the unloading from the conveyor in case that you need it. The definition of the process right now doesn't have a um, resource let's use a resource and let's use a resource let's define that already for the two processes so next time i go to the leave and in the leave i again transfer out accessing the same conveyor because think about it as a it's a subway line. It's the same subway line, it's just that you've taken the same subway line at a different station. And the number of cells that this particular entity needs is just one. So the connection type that we are going to have for the future is a convey. And the next station is defined not by visiting the next station, but by the corresponding sequence. 
In this particular case, there is only one more station to go to, but it, that's not necessarily true for some of the most um, sophisticated models in which you might skip a couple of stations in the conveyor before arriving in, to the station that you want. So we have by sequence and we have defined that. The next uh, enter, we have the option for the delay and the unload. The transfer in is exiting the conveyor. Which conveyor? Again, conveyor one. And in the leave process, we transfer out. We, re we access the conveyor. There is uh, also the option for delay uh, in the transfer out. And we transfer to conveyor one one more time. And the connection type is convey. And the definition of the next and the next station is defined by the sequence. Okay, so it looks like we're almost done. When we get into enter three, we receive the entity by exiting the conveyor from conveyor number one, and then it is disposed. Very good. So now the, the logic of the model is built. Now we need to get into the elements that define all of this. For instance, the sequence. The sequence have not been defined. I can add another sequence. The sequence that I have declared is sequence one. So I correct that. And then I add rows and the first station is enter one, the next station is enter two, and the next station is enter three. So those are my three stations in the sequence. And that is sufficient to determine the sequence. Now let's look at the conveyor. The conveyor is, has been defined as conveyor one. Let's uh, define the segment as conveyor one dot segment. And the conveyor is like the trans associated like the transporter and the distance is associated like the, the distance. So in this case, segments is associated to the specific measures of how long it takes to get on that conveyor to get from one station to another. So we need to define the segment. That segment is conveyor one segment. And the first station in that segment is one. Now, one thing that is very different in conveyors compared to transporters is that transporters can go back and forth over the same distance in both ways. Uh, but it, that's not the case for the conveyors. The conveyors are always one way. And if you want to, want to go back from the, from the second station to the first one, you need to define another piece of segment. It could be part of the same conveyor, or it can be a different one, but you need to specify the way back. So we are going to add the visiting stations after we are in station. Um, I need to double check which station we are in, but the next stations we are going to visit are station enter one, station enter two, and the station enter three. Now let's look. We are in station three, so the first station should be station three in the in the conveyor. Similarly, the sequence. Well, the sequence doesn't is not affected by that because once we enter the station, this we enter that station without depending on any sequence. So that works fine. 
and uh, let me see in the segments we have here the possibility to determine the length the length is measured in um, in cells so maybe we have 30 cells and 30 cells for the next station and 30 cells for the next station and in the conveyor we can specify the speed and this would be cells per hour right maybe we can travel 10 cells per hour okay very good and um, I think um, this should be probably able to be run we have the sequence we have the conveyor we have the segment let's try okay it is running now the you don't see the entities being traveling in the in the conveyors but that can be done using animation we will cover animation in another video but here you see how the entities are being processed and they are being worked the queues are growing uh, because of the distribution maybe we could maybe we could uh, change some of the parameters to reduce the queues by increasing the time between arrivals to maybe 1.2 therefore reducing the utilization and here you have a model that actually runs with